وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to a new episode of The Prophet's Prayer Showing exactly how the Prophet ﷺ used to pray according to his sound <coughs> sunnah. Last time, we studied together formulating an intention before standing up for the prayer, facing the qibla. We studied together takbir al-ihram and raising the hands and where one should put his hands while standing. Uh, the recitation of the beginning supplication seek a refuge with Allah, the recitation of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and that it should be secretly. Then the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha, and we listen to the proper recitation of this Surah in the Salah. Today, inshallah, we resume. After reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, the Musalli would recite a Surah from the Qur'an, long or short. Sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu in one rak'ah, recited Surah Al-Baqarah, all of it and Surah An-Nisa, and Surah Ali Imran, all of that in Raqqa. A person may recite just Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, or any other Surah, or a few verses from any Surah. And by the way, Surah Al-Ikhlas, or Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, is equivalent to one-third of the entire Qur'an. Once, one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu used to recite it on every single Raqqa, along with any other recitation. After he would finish his recitation, he would recite Surah Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. Uh, some of the companions complained to the Prophet Sallallahu about that. So he asked him, why did you saw? He said, because I love this Surah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah loves you as well for your love of this Surah. It's equivalent to one third of the entire Quran. Now we're going to listen to a sample of recitation of a Surah of the Quran. And with us, uh, Sheikh Yasser, please. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. A person may recite another surah if he wishes, up to him or her. And now, after reciting the surah or the verses after Surah Al-Fatiha, we're ready to go to the next rukn or pillar of a salah, which is a ruku'ah. So let's see exactly with Sheikh Yasser, how can a person perform a proper ruku'ah according to the description of Salat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, beginning with takbir. Allahu Akbar. We need to pause for a little bit and examine this position. We notice that. The back is making with the trunk a 90 degree angle and the back is straight. That if I happen to put a glass of water on his back, it would remain still and it won't spill. That's number one. He's holding his knees after he locked them with his fingers spread. And his eyesight is still focused on the place of prostration. So he does not change the position of his eyesight. Now, we'll come to what do we say in Ruku'ah? We'll would listen to the Shaykh saying, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. This is the Sunnah to recite Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim twice. 
And you may say it more than that, but what's mandatory is to say it at least once. Of course, there are other supplications that the Prophet ﷺ used to recite. But just keep in mind one thing before we listen to the Shaykh reciting other supplications. While in a state of ruku'a or sujood, we're prohibited and not allowed to recite any Qur'an. So now, let's listen to some of other recitations of supplications that the Prophet ﷺ used to say while in ruku'a. Subhanakallahumma rabbana wa bihamdik. Allahumma ghfir li. Subbuhun quddusun rabbul malaikati wal ruh. Allahumma laka raka'atu. Wa bika amantu. Wa laka aslamtu. Raka'a laka wajhi wa mukhi wa azmi wa asabi wa nukha'i. Wa mastaqallat bihi qadami. Of course, this is some of the supplications of the Prophet ﷺ. And a person may memorize more if he wishes. And if the person just says, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, that should be fine. And he doesn't have to say anything extra to that. Unless if he or she memorizes more, then it would be best. Sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would make his ruku' as long as his standing was. So that if he was reciting a long surah, his ruku'ah will be long as well. After making ruku'ah, now we're ready to stand up. Whenever the person who's praying rises up, he would make takbir. And along with that, would raise his hands as well. And let us see the illustration of that, please. Sami'allahu liman hamidah. اللهم ربنا ولك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى. So that after saying سمع الله لمن حمده which means Allah listens, understands and answers those who praise him then it is due upon us to praise Allah by saying ربنا لك الحمد in another narration رَبَّنَا وَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ Or you may say, رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدُ مِلْءَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمِلْءَ الْأَرْضِ وَمِلْءَ مَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَمِلْءَ مَا شِئْتَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ بَعْد All of that was narrated from Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. The thing which I wanted to uh, stress on, that it is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is to raise both hands while making takbir in four positions in the entire salah. Number one, of course, takbir ihram the beginning takbir. Number two, while going for ruku' Allahu Akbar, you raise your hands as well. Then number three, after rising up or while rising up from ruku' سَمِعَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَ And that was narrated by a great number of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. This is an act of sunnah, an hay'ah, one of the forms of the prayer. By the meaning that whenever you see a person next to you is not doing so, that doesn't mean that his prayer is invalid. No, if the person perfects the arcane, and completes the khushu'ah, the ruku'ah, and the sujood, and all the proper recitation, with the proper purity in the salah, his salah should be fine and accepted, insha'Allah. But other forms of the prayer, such as, the shaykh after rising up from ruku'ah, he let go his hands. Other scholars said, he should actually, should put his hands, the right on the left, on his chest, as he did while he was reciting. Based on what? Based on that the Prophet ﷺ was reported as putting his hands the right on the left while standing. So why to exempt standing after ruku'? Others say no, that he does not have to put his hands this way after ruku'. Rather, he should let go. In other case, if you let go, or you put your hands on your chest afterward, that does not affect the validity of your prayer. If your imam advises you to do so, then do so 
and there is no blame on you. You are just trying to follow strictly the footsteps in the Sunan of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, after rising up from Ruku'ah, we're ready to go for the next Rukn. So standing with a Rukn, the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha with a Rukn, making Ruku'ah is a Rukn, and going for Sujood, or Sujood itself is a Rukn as well. So if we may see the Shaykh while going for Sujood, and how he would proceed by kneeling on his knees first, knees first, or hands. So please. Allahu Akbar. In this position, before addressing sujood, let's talk about what the Sheikh did. He went on his hands first, then his knees. Based on a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited us from acting like camels, where the camels kneel down on their knees first. Some scholars understood it this way, and some scholars said, no, it is the other way around, that the person should go down by his knees first. On either case, as we agreed, this is just one of the forms of the prayer, and it should not affect the validity of the prayer. The scholars who understood it this way say, this is the proper way to go on your hands first, not on your knees. The position of sujood, we see a lot of common mistakes from people concerning sujood and while making sujood. Notice this, number one, the forehead, the nose, the palms, the knees, and the feet are all touching the floor. The Prophet ﷺ commanded one who is making prostration to have seven bones touching the floor or the ground, which we counted. The nose and the forehead, that's one. And the palms, the knees and the feet. If somebody left his foot while in a state of sujood, he's violating his sujood. While in a state of sujood, that you should keep your elbows apart and away from your body. Your fingers are collected and pointing towards the Qibla. Never put your elbows on the floor. The Prophet ﷺ warned us again is that, and said this sitting resembles the sitting of a dog. So make sure that your elbows are up and away from your body. Unless if you're praying in jama'ah, so that you may collect your elbows towards your body to give a space to the person next to you. But never, under any circumstances, rest your elbows on the ground. Also, the feet, if you can see, that you do not keep them apart. Rather, you collect the feet and the toes too will be pointing towards the Qibla. While in sujood, the sheikh is going to recite, سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى. Well, I understand that we're running out of time, and, and I understand that you're anxiously waiting to know what's next. So please stay tuned. Inshallah, next time we'll continue with the description of the prayer of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, oh, oh.